Obviously, you should always do whatever works for you, but if you're the type of person where you have yourself convinced that you are more productive by working inside of chaos and not having a schedule and not having structure, then you really need to ask yourself, is this objectively true? Or is this a belief that I adopted simply because I do not enjoy having structure and systems and organization in my life and business? And so for those of you who are interested in adopting some of those systems, I'm going to show you kind of my little process or workflow of how I stay organized and productive. So first and foremost, I want you to imagine the inside of your head. And then I want you to imagine somebody firing a machine gun with thousands of bullets ricocheting around. That is basically how most people operate with their thoughts and ideas. And so step one is to write your thoughts down, whether they are useful or not, to simply get them out of your head. However, if you don't write it down, then consciously or unconsciously, it's going to continue bouncing around inside of your head and causing you anxiety. Now, I use Evernote for this, and this particular exercise is not about collecting useful business ideas or anything like that. This particular section is just about taking nagging, or annoying thoughts and writing them down to get them out of your head. So again, I use Evernote for this. Other people love the app Notion. Other people prefer pen and paper. It doesn't matter what you use. You just have to use something to write this stuff down and get it out of your head. Okay, the next thing I do is I always have what I call my North Star Sheet. And your North Star Sheet basically has your long-term goals and objectives. If you ever feel like you're getting lost or getting off track or you don't know what to do, you can always revisit your North Star and say, okay, this, these are the things that I'm trying to accomplish. And now I can start building a step-by-step -step plan on how to go from point A to point B. I look at my North Star sheet multiple times per week just to make sure that I'm not getting off track or spending time doing things that are not in alignment with my North Star goals. The next thing is what some people refer to as a second brain. I think it's David Allen that says, your brain is meant for having ideas not storing them. So what is your second brain? And your second brain is basically the place where you structure and organize your thoughts and ideas into bite-sized actionable steps that you can actually execute on a daily basis. Now, again, you can do this with pen and paper. You can do this with Notion. Personally, I use Trello for this. And just so you can see how I would set this up, we're in Trello right here. I'm gonna go to create, and we're just going to create a new board. We'll just call it demo, hit create, and now we can start creating the board. So here I'm gonna create one that says today, and then I'll do one that says top priority, and then we'll do to do, and then here we'll do one that says done, and then I also like to have a resources uh, thing as well. And we'll just put the resources over here. And so under the resources, this is basically going to be the things that I come back to over and over again. In fact, you can even have your North Star uh, sheet right here. So we can put the North Star. And then if I open this up, we can go ahead and just create the actual sheet. So here are my goals. And then you're just gonna write out your whole thing right here. And obviously you would write a lot more than that, but you get the idea. And then I might also have my daily schedule. Overall, these are just things that you're gonna come back to over and over again. Now, as for the rest, every single time something enters my brain that I think of, where it's something that I have to do or something that I potentially have to do, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the to-do list. So that might look something like, you know, get um, QuickBooks, uh, reconciled okay something like that okay so Trello has an app so I'm adding stuff to this list when I'm at the gym when I'm out doing whatever it is that I'm doing I just have a random thought or an idea I'm gonna pop open Trello on my phone and I'm gonna add it into the to-do list so that I can revisit this later and decide how much of a priority that thing actually is and for me if I don't have these tasks written down they simply will not get done so I have absolutely everything on here whether it's creating YouTube videos creating a marketing campaign, taking out the trash, mowing the lawn, absolutely everything that I have to do throughout the day, week, and months, I will have written down, which means you have a lot more space and mental energy for execution rather than just thinking about all the stuff you have to do and giving yourself anxiety. All right, the next one here is extremely important and I think a lot of people try to avoid this at all costs, but this is one of the biggest game changers if you can actually turn this into a habit. 
And I first heard this one from Tim Ferriss, but it basically says that busyness is a form of laziness. And I think most of us are guilty of this to some degree, but this is basically when you might have, you know, one or two or three really important things to do. Those are the things that are going to move the needle the most. They're going to give you the most results. They're going to give you the most progress on whatever your goal is. The problem is these are also the things that are typically the most difficult or the most uncomfortable, whatever the case may be. These are the things that we typically want to do the least, but they are the most important. So what do we do? We fill up our day with a bunch of meaningless work so that we can fool ourselves into believing that we're being productive. But in reality, we are simply putting off the important things that will actually drive the objective forward. So if you find yourself avoiding uncomfortable things and filling up your day with busy work, then this one's going to be extremely important. And all this really comes down to is doing the worst and most uncomfortable things first. That means when you wake up and you go to the gym and you come back and you're at your highest levels of physical and mental energy, that is when you do the worst and most uncomfortable things on your list of tasks. What you don't wanna do is put the hard things at the end of your list or at the end of your day, because obviously at the end of the day, you're not gonna have as much physical energy, you're not gonna have as much mental stamina, and you will simply not have enough willpower to do the things that you don't want to do. And you're going to put it off until the next day. And then you're going to repeat that process for weeks, months, or potentially years. So by building this habit of doing the worst things first that will impact your business the most, you will make significantly more progress on your business or your goals. And you might say, well, Scotty, what about all the other stuff? I need, I still need to you know, answer emails and respond to clients or do this and that. And that's fine. Of course, you still need to do those things, but those things don't take much mental energy to do. So you can go throughout your entire day. And at the end of the day, those easy things, you can still get them done because they just don't take that much mental energy to do. So again, do the worst things first. Okay, so if we come back to our second brain right here inside of Trello, it's important to collect all of your thoughts and ideas and tasks in here. However, the real key comes down to how you prioritize and execute on the things that you have in here. And so as we can see here, we have, you know, getting QuickBooks reconciled, we have set up the AI bot, and we have cold outreach. And let's just say that QuickBooks is the worst one in here because my QuickBooks was not done properly and it's a total mess. And I know I'm going to have to deal with a bunch of different bookkeepers and get it all figured out. And it's just not something that I want to deal with. So being that that is the one that I want to do the least, that is the one that I'm going to do first. So let's say it's Monday evening. I just finished up my work day and now I want to set up my day for Tuesday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building my Tuesday right in this category right here. So what do we put at the top? Get QuickBooks reconciled. Now, if I go to my daily schedule, we can see that Tuesdays is, you know, filming and editing. So we need to do filming and editing. OK, that's going to be second on the list. And then if there's still time after that, I'm going to do some of these lower priority tasks. OK, so maybe we're going to do the laundry. Maybe maybe we're going to go get a turkey at Costco and get that out of the way. Maybe I'm going to go get the oil changed in the car and get that done. OK, so I'm going to build out my day with the most difficult thing at the top and the easiest things to do at the bottom. OK, now, obviously, this is a quick demonstration, a simplified version just to show you the concept. But the point is, you should always prioritize the most difficult things at the top and do those first and absolutely avoid doing what most people do, which is filling up their day with busy work rather than productive work. The next one here is trimming the fat. So what happens with me is whenever I start a new project or a new business or whatever, I'll typically find, you know, a really good strategy or method that works. And then over the course of time, I'll be adding more strategies or trying different things or implementing new systems into the business. And before I know it, I'm doing a thousand different things and a thousand different systems systems and a thousand different strategies. And I find myself working 18 hours a day and getting less results than I was before. So training this particular habit has been a remedy to that situation. And that is to trim the fat and get rid of the things that aren't as useful, but they're taking a lot of time and energy to do. And to kind of frame your thinking, this one also comes from Tim Ferriss. And he basically says, you know, ask yourself the question, 
what would this look like if it were simple? And if you stop to ask yourself that question, what you'll find is that your brain will start to identify the simple systems that are driving the most results. And then you'll also be able to identify the things, systems, strategies, and all the stuff that you're spending time doing that are taking a lot of time, adding a lot of stress and complexity. And once you identify those things, you want to simply get rid of them, even if it causes a reasonable financial loss. It's much more beneficial to simplify everything as much as it can be possibly simplified. And again, that's going to free up a ton of mental bandwidth in your brain that you can use towards the things that are most beneficial and driving the most gains in whatever it is that you're trying to do. So always think about not just how you can grow and scale, but how you can simplify and trim the fat. All right, the next one here is to make sure that you learn and understand technology and automation. Because again, if you're spending mental energy and time doing a bunch of tasks and things that can be automated, then that is going to have a significant productivity cost and losses in whatever it is that you're trying to do. Which by the way, if you wanna see all of the marketing tools and automation tools and AI tools and stuff like that that I use, you can check the link down in the description. I have a list of all my favorite stuff that I use for my business. Okay, and finally, the last one is to delegate what you can't automate and do it as quickly as you can afford to. Because most people hold out on delegating or outsourcing because they don't want to lose money or increase increase their costs or whatever. But what they're not looking at is how much money they are losing by not outsourcing, by not delegating. Because once again, if you are spending your own physical time and energy on things that can be outsourced and delegated, and you're not spending your own mental energy on the things that will have the biggest impact on driving your business forward, then you are taking significant losses by not delegating and not outsourcing. So to me, there's no better thing that you can possibly spend your money on than building a team and getting your time back so that you can reinvest that time into the most valuable things that drive your objective forward. That's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.